pornography, masturbation, and other sexual sins. Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 29. Introduction Question At what age do we start teaching children about sexual sins? Answer As soon as they act foolish behaviors. Age 18 or age 13 is too late. Way too late. All of the sexual sins, actually all sins, that are committed by an adult are those that were not taught, corrected, and disciplined when he was just a child. If you will not teach your children about sex, something or someone else will teach them. Pornography will. And you don't want that. You do not want that. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 15. Sexual sins are foolish. Foolishness is evil. The root of evil is the love of money. Therefore, the root of sexual sins and all foolishness is also the love of money. For the love of money is the root of all evil. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. James chapter 2 verse 10. In the sight of men, a child is not yet guilty of sexual sins such as masturbation, fornication, adultery, or mongering, etc. But in the sight of God, he is guilty since he already committed foolish behaviors. If a person, regardless of age, offend God's law in one point, he is already guilty of all. That's also why it is never too early to introduce a child to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sinless Son of God who fulfilled the whole law. Law, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Psalm chapter 127 verse 3. He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 24. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. Proverbs chapter 12, 14 verse 26. Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 18. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Proverbs chapter 22 verses 6 and 15. Withhold not correction from the child. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod, and shalt deliver his soul from hell. Proverbs chapter 23, verses 13 to 14. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Correct thy son, and he will give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Proverbs chapter 29, verses 15 and 17. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 13 Chastise thy son, and hold him to labor, lest his lewd behavior be an offense unto thee. Ecclesiastes chapter 30 verse 13 Definition of Terms Pornography Printed or visual material containing the explicit description or display of sexual organs or activity intended to stimulate erotic rather than aesthetic or emotional feelings. Masturbation. Stimulation of the genitals with the hand for sexual pleasure. Voyeurism or adultery in heart. 
the practice of gaining sexual pleasure from watching others when they are naked or engaged in sexual activity. Fornication, sexual intercourse between people not married to each other. Adultery, voluntary sexual intercourse between a married person and a person who is not his or her spouse. Prostitution, the practice or occupation of engaging in sexual activity with someone for payment. Whoremongering, sexually licentious behavior as promiscuity consorting with prostitutes. Concupiscence, strong sexual desire, lust. Debauchery, extreme indulgence in bodily pleasures and especially sexual pleasures, behavior involving sex, drugs, alcohol, etc. that is often considered immoral. Lasciviousness, a lustful or lewd quality, the quality of arousing sexual desire. Lewdness, indecency or obscenity, vulgar sexual character or behavior. Promiscuity, having or involving many sexual partners, not restricted to one sexual partner or few sexual partners. Homosexuality, LGBTQIA+, sexual attraction, romantic attraction, or sexual behavior between members of the same sex or gender. Incest, sexual relations between people classed as being too closely related to marry each other. The crime of having sexual intercourse with a parent, child, sibling, or grandchild. Rape. A type of sexual assault involving sexual intercourse or other forms of sexual penetration carried out against a person without their consent. Gangbang. A successive rape of one person by a group of people. A sexual orgy involving changes of partner. Bestiality. Sexual intercourse between a person and an animal. Paraphilia. A condition characterized by abnormal sexual desires, typically involving extreme or dangerous activities. Sodomy. Sexual intercourse involving anal or oral copulation, anal sex and oral sex. Zophilia. Sexual attraction of a human toward a non-human animal, which may involve the experience of sexual fantasies about the animal or the pursuit of of real sexual contact with it. Group sex, the practice of having sex with multiple partners at the same time. Example, threesome. OG, a wild party characterized by excessive drinking and indiscriminate sexual activity. Swinging, the practice of engaging group sex or the swapping of sexual partners within a group especially on a habitual basis. Exhibitionism, a compulsion to display one's genitals or other intimate body parts or to behave sexually in public. Fetishism, a form of sexual behavior in which gratification is strongly linked to a particular object or activity or a part of the body other than sexual organs. Fraturism, the act of touching or rubbing one's genitals up against another person in a sexual manner without their consent to derive sexual pleasure or reach orgasm. Masochism, the tendency to derive pleasure, especially sexual gratification from one's own pain or humiliation. Sadism, the tendency to derive pleasure, especially sexual gratification from inflicting pain, suffering, or humiliation on others. Verses And blessed is the eunuch, which with his hands hath wrought no iniquity, nor imagined wicked things against God. For unto him shall be given the special gift of faith, and an inheritance in the temple of the Lord, more acceptable to his mind. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 14 the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 3. 
Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body shall, should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 to 30. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 11 to 13. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Colossians chapter 3 verses 5 to 6. By mercy and truth iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 6. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast, defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. Leviticus chapter 18, verses 22 to 23. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one toward another men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet romans chapter 1 verses 26 to 27 know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god be not deceived neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor tobettors, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9-10 to 10. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 18 to 20. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it. And pass away for they sleep not except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence Proverbs chapter 4 verses 14 to 17 Leviticus chapter 18 and the Lord spake unto Moses saying Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwell, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Ye shall do my judgments, and keep my ordinances, to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. 
None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover your nakedness. I am the Lord. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or the daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. The nakedness of thy son's daughter, or of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover, for theirs is thine own nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter, begotten of thy father, she is thy sister, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister, she is thy father's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, for she is thy mother's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife, she is thine aunt. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law, she is thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife, it is thy brother's nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. Neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness, for they are her near kinswoman. It is wickedness. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister to vex her to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her lifetime. Also thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. Moreover, Thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife, to defile thyself with her. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, it is abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast, to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto, it is confusion. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all this the nations are defiled which I cast out before you, and the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomited out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations. Neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. That the land spew not you out also, when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep my ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness, and drink the wine of violence. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 14 to 17. But he adds, Neither shalt thou eat of the hair. To what end? To signify this to us, Thou shalt not be an adulterer, nor liken thyself to such persons. For the hair every year multiplies the places of its conception, and so many years as it lives, so many it has. Neither shalt thou eat of the hyena, that is, again, be not an adulterer, nor a corrupter of others, neither be like to such. And wherefore so? Because that creature every year changes its kind, and is sometimes male, and sometimes female. 
for which cause also he justly hated the weasel, to the end that they should not be like such persons who with their mouths commit wickedness by reason of their uncleanness, nor join themselves with those impure women who with their mouths commit wickedness, because of that animal conceives with its mouth. General Epistle of Barnabas, chapter 9, verses 7 to 9. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger, he will not live off till he die. A man that breaketh wedlock, saying thus in his heart, Who seeth me? I am compassed about with darkness. The walls cover me, and nobody seeth me. What need I to fear? The Most High will not remember my sins. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men, and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are ten thousand times brighter than the sun beholding all the ways of men, and considering the most secret parts. He knew all things ere ever they were created. So also after they were perfected, he looked upon them all. This man shall be punished in the streets of the city, and where he suspecteth not, he shall be taken. Thus shall it go also with the wife that leaveth her husband, and bringeth in an heir by another. For first she hath disobeyed the law of the Most High, and secondly, she had trespassed against her own husband. And thirdly, she had played the whore in adultery and brought children by another man. Ecclesiastes chapter 23, verses 17 to 23. Three sorts of men my soul hateth, and I am greatly offended at their life. A poor man that is proud, a rich man that is a liar, and an old adulterer that doteth. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 2. An harlot shall be accounted a spittle, but a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 22. Confession, Repentance, and Restoration For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord, because I have sinned against him, until he plead my cause, and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. Micah chapter 7 verses 8 to 9. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed unto the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 to 16. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. But unto them that repent, He granted them return, and comforted those that fail in patience. Return unto the Lord, and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face, and offend less. Turn again to the Most High, and turn away from iniquity, for he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health, and hate thou abomination vehemently. Ecclesiastes chapter 17, verses 24 to 26. My son, Hast thou sinned, do so no more, but ask pardon for thy former sins. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent, for if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion, slaying the souls of men. Ecclesiastes chapter 21, verses 1 to 2. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. 
Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with a free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure and design. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon the altar. Psalm chapter 51. Jesus went out unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself, and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down, and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone. And the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those then accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. John chapter 8, verses 1 to 11. But sin taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Romans chapter 7 verses 8 to 25. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to men. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, bold, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool, and troubled the water. 
Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man, when the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed, and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that you said unto thee, Take up thy bed, and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward Jesus findeth him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. John chapter 5 verses 1 to 14 Seek ye the Lord while he may be found call ye upon him while he is near let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon Isaiah chapter 55 verses 6 to 7